Hey was uh, on his team. I played with him a bunch last night. Cool. Indeed. So this is our first uh, game of the day in the Ghost of Gamers Overwatch Weekly EU Cup. Uh, we didn't plug it coming in, but we do have a Matcherino page up as well. We'll have more on that later as the stream rolls along. Yep. Of course, Metrino, you just go there, throw in the... Do you guys know the routine by now. Donate for free, yeah. throw in the coupon code GGEU, uh, throw in a dollar for free. Also, uh, we have a giveaway going on today. So we're giving away a copy of Overwatch for each of our weekend tournaments. You can just type in exclamation giveaway in chat. That is a partnership with G2A. Uh, so you go to... You type that uh, into chat, you go to the link. You can figure it out from there. We'll, we'll touch more on that later. But we are giving away copies of Overwatch as it's releasing soon. Indeed. So take a look here uh, at the teams as I set up. For the life of Hanzo, we got Dummy now on the Widowmaker, Defensive Widow, interesting. Uh, Dehang on Mercy, Durs on Symmetra, Mezrar on Reinhardt, AZK on McCree, and ID finishing off on the Reaper. And yeah, some legendary FPS players on uh, life of Hanzo, like Dehang and ID. Uh, here, uh, Durs also has uh, quite history behind him as well. Mezrar and Dummy, of course, former non Enigma alumni, so really curious to see what, what comes out of them here today. Yeah, offensively, Styx is going to run a composition that looks uh, very much like Beta 1. Demon is going to be on Reaper. Sparky will be on the Pharah. We have a Winston coming out from Sparfield. Mercy will be played by Tendra, Nesty on Reinhardt, and Lullaby on Lucio. And AZK with a quick pick off on Sparkle, aided by Dummy. That was some long-range poke coming out from both McCree and Widow. But that's going to be a uh, quick pick off in favor of Life of Hanzo, and they're starting out uh, pretty well. Yeah, it's really brutal when you lose a DPS as your first law, like first pick that early, kind of away from the rest of the team. It just slows down your entire push by about 20 seconds. Well, Sparky is on the way back. Uh, might be looking to come in over the top, given the position. And uh, speaking of coming over the top, here comes Winston coming in over the top. As the rest of the team sword gang second there, that's right. Here comes Sparky coming over the top, laying rockets from above. Durzo able to take out the Winston uh, very quickly. Uh, we see uh, Sticks down a player to begin with. Down two players now as Mezra and Dummy go off. Three players! And again, uh, good defense coming out from Life of Hanta. Yeah, way too late on the follow-up to that initiation. Winston jumped in and essentially you want your team, um, uh, you know, to, to come in right behind him. The, the second tank was late, the follow-up was late, and they were just a little too uh, uncoordinated on that push. Got shut down very easily. And let's talk about AZK. AZK able to get... Uh, another uh, two kills there as McCree. Uh, I feel like every team sort of has its... Uh, you know, Hallmark McCree, the McCree that you see, okay, this guy's alive, everything's going to go well, and AZK might be that player for Life of Hanzo. Yeah, I mean, he's shown so far, I mean, this is where people start making names for themselves in the round of 16 against other teams where, you know, we don't necessarily get to see them that often, but a standout performance is a standout performance on either side, and, um, yeah, uh, it will definitely be, able, like, we, we know some of these other players, I don't know a ton about AZK, but already looking very good. Yeah, definitely. So, we're going to see uh, st these sticks offense try to come in over here again. Uh, D-Man able to take out uh, Dehang, so that's pick. a good offensive Widow pick. Uh, Dehang's down. That means that not only are they down a player, but there's no Resurrect that's going to be coming in here as well. Dummy, though, able to strike back, takes out Winston. Winston, though, took out Durs as he went in, so Sticks still at the advantage as they go forward here, but AZK and Dummy able to return fire just a bit. D-Man with two extra picks. D-Man going off his Widow right now. Uh, Dehang was able to get back and uh, res, however, so yeah, I don't think this is quite going to go as well as they wanted. But I, I, I didn't love that res there. I, I think it could be safer, a better situation. You're just resing people to die in there. However, the initiation from Winston there was followed up much quicker and looked much more coordinated than the first one. So if the if the trend is going that direction, this next push should be even better. I'm ready to so, uh, Styx is regrouping here. They have two minutes, 20 seconds left. Sparkle able to take out dummies, so now uh, 65 in favor of Styx. They are rushing in, but in comes ID. ID with a great death blossom. Going to take out two people as uh, Sparky comes in over the top. But as a result, uh, we do see the res coming out Much now from Styx. Styx is going to resurrect some of their fallen heroes. Uh, They're moving forward. Uh, Pharaoh's still down in all this. ID and uh, AZK really combining for a lot of damage in the midst of this fight. In fact, uh, we're going to see ID to finish off the Reinhardt there, so... I mean, six. They're starting to put together some of the pieces here, but it wasn't quite coordinated enough for them to get through. Uh, they're gonna reset again and take a look at the uh, ultra next fight. Dummy takes out D-Man, and now uh, 65 for Stick. So they probably will just have to wait for D-Man here. Yeah, not only do they have to win this next fight, but they have to win it twice essentially, unless they can take out to Hang early, as the resurrection is available. I imagine to Hang is going to be positioning himself very defensively. Yeah, definitely. The teleporter also so up. So, uh, Sticks, right now we see them just uh, regrouping here. They do have Barrage, they do have Sound Barrier, they have Ultimates 
On command, the only defensive ult right now is uh, Resurrect. It's still a very impactful ultimate if used properly, and I think they're really just trying to... Styx is trying to make the most out of what could be their last push here. They're really... They're all in. Yeah, their last push with the ultimates. At least here comes the Winston initiation yeah, over offensive the top. Sound barrier is coming out there, moving in. Barrage comes down from Sparky. D-Man takes out Dummy. Two kills now for Styx, but here comes uh, ID. ID comes in from the back, gets a kill on Sparky. We do see a Resurrect coming out from Dehang. We'll see if that's enough, but right now, a lot of momentum in favor of Styx as they move forward here. I like the coordinated push as they went in. ID uh, does throw on Death Blossom, gets hammered out by Reinhardt, however. So uh, Styx trying to make this, this happen. This change everything. We do have people coming back in off the teleporter, though. Uh, Mesrar, you just had a good Earth Shatter, and that's four kills now for the defense of Life of Hanzo. So, yeah, it's just one of those things where it was a good offensive push, but because they weren't able to get to the teleporter, Life of Hanzo was able to reinforce, and uh, that's how it went. And Dummy and D-Man both taking each other out there in the end. Hanzo versus Widow, and this is going to be the last gas push coming out for... As sticks as they come forward here, I might see a res from uh, Yatendra any second here, just to at least bring up Farah. The Resurrect does come in, they are going to bring up some of their fallen heroes. But right now, they don't have the presence they need at the point. They'll be able to force overtime, perhaps, if they get on it right now. But it's they're just going to have to filter in and hope for the best. But AZK and ID cleaning things up and not letting that happen. Yeah, I, I think I would have liked to see something to switch uh, just to kind of deal with the reinforcement mechanics that Life of Hanzo had up. Not only did they have the Mercy Resurrection up, they also had a teleporter, but they had no flankers to really try to get to the back lines to deal with that teleporter. They had no one to really get to the Mercy before she can get the Resurrection off. Just going face first into a, a composition that can resurrect and reinforce like that, it's going to be a bad time. I see Death Blossom coming out from ID. Uh... As Six tried to get through the archway, uh, Reaper is still very, very effective on this map when uh, played properly. I mean, yes, teams have gotten a lot better at dealing with Death Blossom. They know how to run back away from it. They know how to, you know, th immediately throw down a sound barrier when they even see it coming in. But it's still one of those ultimates that can catch teams unawares from time to time. It's also one of the few ultimates that you can kind of fake having, you know, because when you see a Reaper running in on a speed boost and jump from above, immediately you're feared. And we've seen that happen a couple times where a Reaper doesn't have his resurrection, jumps on top of his Zenyatta, and he just has to hit Transcendent. So it's a good way to bait out ultimates, too. Indeed. So, switching to the next side, it's not going to be Life of Hanzo's time to attack. Should Life of Hanzo capture Point A in Hollywood, they will win the map outright. That'll be it. The map will end where it stands, and uh, that will be it. Yeah, if we uh, do have a defensive hold, though, that will be a draw, um, which we've never seen, I think, personally live on stream. So, unlikely, but possible. We don't know uh, how teams can, you know... It's, it's just so hard to gauge teams that you haven't seen a ton well, before on offense and or defense. I don't know, you know, if, if their defense might be their strong suit as well uh, as in regards to sticks. Draws right now are simply handled by uh, both teams getting a win uh, should a draw happen, but they're very, very rare. I mean, like, as you mentioned, we haven't actually even seen it on the mainstream yet. Yeah, I think we had our first one last week, and this is our eighth week of doing weekly. So that's 16 weeklies. So not too bad so far. Usually teams, uh, you know, even when you have two evenly matched teams, usually there's some degree of difference between them that will uh, show up in the actual gameplay in terms of uh, points, progress, etc. That will make the difference. Plus, FPS games, you know, we say it a lot, but FPS games are pretty variable. So even if you have two evenly matched teams, the odds of one team just gets a better push at some point to go through is pretty high. Yeah, I mean... Honestly, uh, an FPS game can be decided by a pixel here or there. Just if you hit that hitbox or not, if you hit a shot, is the difference between a kill, which is the difference between a fight, map, etc., set. You know, it, it all comes down to those very small moments all adding up. Uh, it looks like um, I'll just run through the offense here as I'm stuck in spawn with them. Happy to be enjoying my popcorn with teams. Uh, with Team Life of Pi, at the movie theaters, Life of Hanzo, of course. Uh, IID will be on Farah, AZK on McCree, Mesrar, of course, on Reinhardt, Durs on Lucio, Dehang on Mercy, and Dummy looks like he might be rolling out on Hanzo. Yep, looking at the defensive end here, uh, we got Nesty on the Reinhardt, Lullaby on Lucio, Sparky on McCree, D-Man on the Reaper, Svarthiel on the Junkrat, and Yatendra finishing things up on the Symmetra. So, taking a look here as the Life of Hanzo offense rolls through. Uh, Mesrard leading the charge in his white Paragon Reinhardt. Uh, and actually, they're running an offense of Hanzo. So, sticking with the uh, theme of the game, the Life of Hanzo, with the offense of Hanzo, no less. And they're just uh, waiting to go in here. I think perhaps waiting for Lucio, uh, amp it up speed boost, etc. They're not uh, 
you know, rushing through this too, too quickly, uh, taking their time. Here comes a speed boost. They all get and They're just gonna yeah. work for positioning here more so than anything else. And AZK able to get a quick kill on the D-Man. Meanwhile, uh, both Reinhardt's uh, slugging it out in the back. AZK able to take out D-Man. Dummy with the pick on Reinhardt. So, in comes uh, Life of Hanzo. Sparky with a little bit of fire takes out ID. But uh, AZK doing a whole lot of work here. And we're taking a look at Hanzo as Hanzo comes in and forward. Uh, AZK with another kill on the Symmetra, so this is going to be potentially yeah. a very quick cap in favor of Life of Hanzo here. Oh, yeah. Saltero misses, and actually, D-Man going to take out Dummy there. So take a look at AZK. AZK, of course, doing a whole ton of work for them this game. The cap point is capped, and as a result, Life of Hanzo going to move on. Or not move on, but uh, move on to map number two right. with a uh, 1-0 lead yeah. over... Uh, team Sticks. I think Dummies on Hanzo just for show at this point because even towards the end of last game when it seemed that they had it wrapped up, he switched off to Hanzo just to put him in the character bar. So they're, they're definitely staying true to their name at the very least. They are staying true to their name. Now one thing I gotta figure out, we have to figure out what console commands Internet Hulk was using uh, yesterday. Because he was able to reload the lobby and whatnot from his end entirely. Yeah, Internet Hulk with his secrets. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll poke the IDDQD guys. I don't, I don't think they ever hang out in Twitch chat, though, so it's going to be hard to get a hold of them. Yeah, it will be a little bit hard to get a hold of them. So, <laughs> let's see. You know, you don't like you only see uh, Mendo and Pluppy in chat all the time. Let's put it that way. I mean, they could be in chat right now. I don't even know. I haven't even looked at chat today, so. Yeah, I'm getting unable to assign instance removing. I see the thing pop up, then it goes away. Are you having an issue, or is it just me? Yeah. I think what ha when that happens, we just need to have them uh, remake lobby again. Okay, no problem. Uh, while we have a brief moment, just to remind everyone, we are working with Matcherino yet again. We've been thrilled with our partnership for them. It's worked out really well. Uh, so hit Matcherino into the chat box. That'll take you to our tournament page at the top right corner. It just says sign in. That connects with your Twitch. Super easy. Like I say every week, if I can do it, I have great faith that our, our viewers can do it as well. Then you hit the donate button. That donate button does not take anything out of your wallet. It, it just allows you to put in our coupon code, which is GGEU3. That throws a dollar into the prize pool. Donate for free. You can leave a little message if you're feeling generous. Go ahead and push in some more money if you want. That goes right to the players, right into the prize pool. Uh, and you can leave a message and we'll, we'll uh, take a look at those and perhaps read it depending if it is or is not Pluppy Spam. Um, and yeah, that, that, that adds to our prize pool. We've had really great success with it, so please take time to do that. Also in chat, uh, exclamation giveaway. We'll give you all the information you need to know to sign up for our Gosu Gamers Overwatch giveaway in partnership with uh, G2A. We are throwing away copies of Overwatch for uh, our tournament today and our tournament tomorrow. And then, of course, we have our initial sponsors still that I'd like to shout out as well. Rocket and DX Racer. If you're looking for a place to sit while you game, DX Racer can hook you up. If you're looking for the actual tools to game, Rocket can hook you up as well. So we're very happy to have all of our sponsors. Do all those things in chat. Chat uh, is, is useful for more than just spreading memes. You can also win Overwatch and donate whoa, to the whoa, prize. Whoa. Well, let's not be crazy here. Chat is mostly useful for spreading memes. Yeah, I said it's you know useful for more than just spreading memes. No, I didn't. That didn't mean to be a just as a, like a reductive kind of term. I, I didn't mean it to, to sound bad. I mean, meme is life, right? The, the scene is the meme. I mean, really, I thought Chad was just supposed to be there as a uh, surrogate for uh, Mendo and uh, TV. Yeah. Um, actually, you know, I'm not even seeing them. Maybe they're actually playing. Well, we'll see. We'll see if they're they're actually. I mean, they they could be uh, playing with IDDQD. You never know. I mean, uh, they've gotten the first round buys in the first few uh, or the last few tournaments, so things have really uh, <laughs> that, that's escalated things. With but yeah, it's really cool. We just started doing the G2 way giveaway this week, so we're happy to be giving away copies of Overwatch. I want more people to play Overwatch. I love this game so much. It's ridiculous. Um, so I, I cast generally, then I'll stream, and then like I'm like, okay, guys, I'm tired. I'm cutting off stream. And then I end up playing for like another three hours off stream. Like It's just insane. I, I, gotta, I need help. So uh, the, we do have a map choice here for the next map. It's going to be uh, Nepal. So we're going to get to see uh, Life of Hanzo versus Six on Nepal. And we're seeing, you know, one thing I do like, we are seeing more King of the Hill maps recently. Uh, you do see teams sort of getting the ruts where it's just all payload. But every now and then, you'll have just payload maps explode. Uh, here we're getting a little bit of variety. Uh, we start out with Hollywood going to Nepal next. So it's good stuff all around. Nepal seems to be the favorite King of the Hill map. Uh, the one that we see most teams go to, the, mm. the ones that teams, I think, mostly scrim. Nepal also the only map that teams have been able to take off of IDDQD, so it's possible that teams are scrimming in preparation to uh, beat the, the top team right now. 
Uh, but Nepal is very fun to watch. Second stage, you see a lot of sniper action. Uh, I love to see my girl Farah on here. I love watching people fall to their deaths, which is why King of the Hill is such a great uh, game mode for me. We also see a little bit of Lijiang Tower, but I think Nepal is slowly creeping its way to be into kind of the standard rotation of like a Hollywood, Kings Row, Numbani, Nepal kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Nepal, of course, I think it's definitely the most played of uh, King of the Hill maps, if nothing else, uh, thus far. Uh, certainly one that people are most uh, comfortable with. I think part of the reason is that you're less likely to get knocked off, at least until you get to round number three. Like, there are the sides that you can get knocked off, of course, but uh, it's really round number three where you have the pit right uh, in the middle. But you don't always go to round three. In fact, I think it's, uh, for one reason or another, uh, it's actually somewhat rare to see King of the Hill go round three. We have seen it, but... I'd say it happens maybe 25% of our King of the Hill maps, maybe less. It's also the most open King of the Hill map, uh, you know, especially the first couple stages where the fighting is actually going to take place uh, over a wide area of places uh, for the most part. The, the the entire map is used, whereas you get on a map like Li Zhang and it's generally just there's a one giant room and uh, we're going to fight in this one giant room and maybe knock people off of the edge. Uh, I think that's why people tend to prefer Nepal. It has a, a little more open feel to it, um, but... We'll see what goes here. Hopefully someone gets knocked yep. off the edge. That's all I hope for, ever. Uh, it's just like, you know what? You just want to watch people uh, fall to their deaths. You want to watch the world burn. Uh, you got a little bit of Joker in you. But taking a look at the teams here as they set up. We're going to have Life of Hanzo. Uh, wow, look at this. Yeah. So looking at their roster here, assuming it stays the way it is, we're going to have Dehang on Zenyatta, Durs on Lucio, Mesrar on the Zarya ID on May, so not giving up on the May just yet uh, for Life Hanzo, AZK on the McCree, and Dummy Shadow Popeye. We're gonna, we'll are we find out soon. Yeah, I Pretty mean, sure. I love Zarya on this map. I think she's a great tank. You do want to tank. You want someone with a little bit of health, but also it's kind of that self-sustain to be able to heal themselves up afterwards. Of course, her shields do that. Also, being able to cleanse people, giving the individual shields. It's such a great map for flankers, so Dummy's going to be getting those allied shields. I love Zarya, and she is on both sides, it appears, as uh, Styx is going to be running Lullaby on Lucio, Nesty on Roadhog. Uh, Tendra will be on the Zenyatta. Sparthiel will be on... My girl Zarya, Demon on Reaper, and Sparky on McCree. I see why you took that side, the side of Bracky you took. I have much harder names over yeah. here. Yeah, no, no, it's all, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> but take a look at Life Hanzo as they uh, rush out here to meet the 16 on the field of battle. They actually uh, get to the sort of uh, right side point a little bit quicker. We see teams uh, fight on there quite a bit. Because what happens is that if you don't get on this point, then you sort of get flanked from high ground, which is exactly what's happening right now. Sparky, though, able to get first kill of the game, takes out Dummy as Dummy was in the back. So even with the, potentially the positioning advantage here, Life Hanzo not... Uh, having the best start that they won. Dummy will be back soon, though. Tracer, if she does anything, she gets back into the fight pretty quickly. Yeah, I kind of like where Styx was there, though. I mean, everyone seems to have this agreement to go fight on the high ground and then take the point to the winner, but I actually like that, you know, at some point they have to come down and contest the point. Yep, uh, Dummy uh, taking out D-Man, uh, Tendra taking out AZK, and actually uh, seeing Styx here really making the most sense. Sparky doing a whole ton of work on McCree. Uh, three kills for him so far in this. He will finally uh, go down to uh, Zenyatta in the end, but uh, both teams fighting out on top of the point. And uh, right now, actually, momentum in favor of Sticks. They're very close to getting the first cap here, and that's what they're going to do. Yeah, very nice. I, I mean, it, it's always been kind of like, let's just brawl it out. Braveheart style at the top, winner will take the point. But I wish you really like there. At some, you know, you guys have to come down and fight us. And they were happy in the position kind of behind the point. There's also that pack room they could have retreated to, too. Really cool positioning by Sticks. Absolutely, Alfonso going to be coming back out here in just a month. They're waiting for Zanyata to hang the get back over. Uh, we might see a uh, dummy flank in from the side, and that's what we're going to see. He was actually waiting for the Harmony Orb before going back in, so that makes all the sense wrong. What a nice stick, but it... Oh, no. <laughs> dummy. Uh, unfortunate. Uh, meanwhile, we see Sparky going for the uh, Deadeye. Not going to get the Deadeye uh, off, though, so he's going to go down. Now it's 5v5. Uh, Sticks versus Lifonzo here. Uh, sound Barrier is down from Durs, and they're going to try and make the most of us. We do see a offensive Deadeye coming out from AZK. AZK able to pick off two kills like that. And now, uh, Lifonzo coming right back with the advantage in the middle. AZK, AZK going to get the final pickoff. And, uh, then some, so... Yeah. Good stuff coming up from Life of Hanzo, yeah. despite the uh, invert Tracer suicide. I just have this terrible habit, uh, or curse rather, of going on a player and then I just cause them to die in the most terrible of ways. Uh, dummy joined the ranks of Too Easy and many others there. Yeah, uh, so a lot of ultimates used there, and they had the advantage going in. They just all hit Q for the most part, but they did. They were able to save Transcendence. Transcendence was forced out to the other team. Tendra trying his best to save his team, but just too much power coming down. 
Uh, but now we do see some alts coming up for sticks, and they're gonna need them to try to regain this point. Yep, uh, I, I can't say enough how much work AZK has been doing in this game so far. And we actually are gonna see Life Hanzo move up a little bit, trying to attack at the archway if possible. Uh, but Tendra and Sparky coming right back. Sparky, of course, has been doing a lot of work as McCree this entire game. And now uh, Life Hanzo, while not pushed out of middle, has to back up just a little bit and be a bit careful. Or Sparky right now coming around the left, looking for some value, is able to take out AZK. Value uh, found. Sparky definitely a standout right now for Team Sticks as uh, they're moving out to the points, trying to push people out. Durs goes down. And now we see Sticks uh, pretty well corn in. They're gonna recontrol the middle point. Yeah, they took it back and they didn't really have to use alts either. So now all the alts are coming up for uh, Life of Hanzo, but they're gonna be able to go out, counter them. And we'll see. I think the Graviton Surge could really affect this next fight. Yep, we see Dummy right now, uh, Pulse Bomb at the ready, uh, Blizzard at the ready, so a lot of ult up for Life Hanzo, but a lot of ult up for the defense as well. Yeah, I think we're going to be seeing a Death Blossom at point here. Uh, look at this, uh, there comes the ground on Surge, Death Blossom coming in from the back from D-Man, that's going to be a 3 kill for D-Man, but look at this, AZK and ID cleaning house, bringing this back, AZK able to take out the Zenyatta, so despite getting hit by the Graviton Wombo combo, what we see here is that Life of Hanzo comes back and gets the point anyways. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the brutality that was, that, was that black hole into Death Blossom, there were about two up on either side, and they just won that 2v2, um, and were able to take the point off of it, so now the Graviton on surge is up for life of Hanzo. We just now we're, we're remembering how powerful that all can be. Oh no, this ice wall completely. Yep, up I, Zarya. That was a great ice wall from ID. Completely uh, left Zarya out and uh, really in the cold, so to speak. <laughs> I made that. I made that pun. I, uh, offensive sun bear coming out here, but here comes a graviton surge dealing with it. Uh, Reaper's gonna wraith walk out, but meanwhile AZK gonna get the ball. Takes out Nesty. ID takes out Sparkle. Two down now for six. Make it three. ID with the pickoff on Lucio. This is going to be a full wipe in favor of Life of Hanzo, and this is going to very likely be round one. I'm not even sure over time can be forced. Nope. Yeah, I think nope. the reason we're seeing May and Zarya, and then to a, even a certain extent Tracer, is the area of effect ultimates on King of the Hill can be so powerful. Even when the Blizzard is missing, I saw there that like, there were a couple people left for stakes, and they were trying to get back to each other, but the Blizzard was in their way, and they didn't want to go through the cold. So those area effects when teams are grouped up on the point when these big fights happen, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of it, especially with the Zarya uh, buff recently. Definitely. So, uh, eight seconds out till uh, round two is in progress. Uh, really, really close round one. So, uh, curious to see what happens here in round two. Uh, no, no major, major changes. We will see ID on the 76 uh, instead. Uh, we'll see just what he does on 76 here. And 76 actually pretty good on this map. Once you get control of the middle point, uh, you can really poke people out from range. And oftentimes has value. Yeah, a little more open on those longer sight lines, which is why we often see Widowmakers on this map as well. Yep, so we see a dummy right now flanking around the side, but meanwhile, let's take a look at the frontal battle. Again, we see uh, Life Hanzo favoring the high ground here as they go in. Dummy and ID able to combine for two quick kills on the sticks. Uh, sticks have a bit of trouble. Zarya shield on the McCree. Uh, Sparky is going on. Sparky, of course, uh, sort of the heart of sticks when they do well so far in this uh, game. But this is going to be a full wipe in favor of Life Hanzo. They're going to get control of the middle point first. And now they're going to be able to get some pretty good positioning out of it as well. Yeah, they should get them about 25% of the point as these points do move rather quickly here. Um, and they're still waiting to be at full force as sticks. And even beyond that, Dummy must have done a ton of damage. He's got Pulse Bomb up and ready. Yeah, taking a look at Dummy here. Dummy is uh, ready to go in. He's actually been really good about the... One thing I like uh, so far, even though uh, they haven't gotten kills per se, he's been really good about doing you know three blinks in that stick. It's really uh, beautiful to watch. So uh, we do see the Pulse Bomb coming out from Dummy, and that's a tip. Just as I say that, he gets two kills off the Pulse Bomb, so a bit of an anti-curse there, if anything. That's going to be three kills for Life for Hanzo. Make it four kills, and that, uh, off the Pulse Bomb of Dummy and a bit of cleanup. Uh, Sticks going to be sent back to their spawn point. That push looked like it was pretty doomed from the start, as I think they were going to try to speed burst with Lucio in, and it only caught two of the, the teammates, and there was a Roadhog lagging behind and a couple others, so it essentially accidentally split their whole team while they were trying to rush in. Yep, uh, look at the ultimate situation here. The, this might not fare any better for Sticks. Uh, defensive sound bearer is up now for Life Hanzo. They can blow that just as soon as they see people coming in. Uh, Reaper's going to have to use Wraith Form quickly. And look at this poke from ID. Uh, ID really uh, making this rough for them. Attack Visor is down. Here comes the rush down from Sparky. But no, Sparky got going to the AZK. Tactical Visor is out. ID doing all sorts of damage. Has a double kill. Looking for a third. Roadhog in all sorts of trouble. Go most likely going to be ID's third. Down he goes. And as a result, Life Hanzo going to hold in here. And now... For Sticks, they're facing tournament elimination. They need to at least force overtime uh, very soon here. 20% left on the round. If they lose this round, they're out of the tournament. Life Hanzo will move on. 
and uh, very well might be facing Flat Earth. Graviton Surge is up and it is their last gasp of hope we've seen on King of the Hill maps. If you lose two to three fights, you essentially lose the map. Up and Sun Bear coming up, but look at the Graviton Surge in response to it. The Pulse Bomb is out, and that's going to explode it. A huge portion of the Sticks team, uh, great coordination coming out there. But hey, uh, as I say that, what are, they were able to, only two people died and they were actually able to push through the Transcendence. Yeah, they, so this is the second time this game now on against uh, Lifonzo where you see a great wombo combo go off and then the team loses the fight anyways. Yeah, it was such a strange fight. They were just staring at each other in the black hole. We're gonna have another fight though as the action gets back going here. Uh, Lifonzo looking to take like this point and win the map. Dummy and AZK uh, picking up uh, a kill each. Uh, three kills now, four Lifonzo's to come back. Four, five kills for Lifonzo coming back in. So they're gonna recap this point and now they're going to win. I'm actually just surprised though. I, I want to look back at that fight uh, at some point and see what exactly happened there because, you know, from the looks of it, everyone got hit by Groton. Pulse Bomb came in, usually that's it, but they were able to survive off their own sound barrier and transcendence and come in. So, interesting stuff. Yeah, overall, though, a very strong showing from Life of Hans. I'm so glad we got to watch them after talking about them last week, and uh, I, we might even just be looking to follow them a little bit through the bracket as we see what other results happen. But this, yeah, this is the fight. Yeah, this is the fight. So we saw what was going on there. Uh, Sparky and uh, D-Man were able to get to... I think what happened is that D-Man got set back with Wraith Form. He wasn't stuck in the Graviton like everyone else because you can Wraith Form out. Mm -hmm. And then I think that combined with a little bit of aid from Sparky was able to pick off enough people in the back line to make things work out for, well for them. Yeah, they're also able to keep alive just with that Transcendence as Tendra hit a couple really clutch Transcendences. Not only there, but in the first stage as well. Yeah. So, uh, good first round coming out. Uh, Sticks will go out in the first round, but they had some good moments, and Life Hanzo uh, definitely looking strong. Curious to see just how uh, Life Hanzo versus Flat Earth goes down. Should it be Flat Earth based on our rankings? We assume it will be Flat Earth. Um, the only rankings that we have, or the only results we have coming in, is that Gringo's advanced past the first round. It might be one of their one of their first advancements past the first round. So good job for them. They always show up in tournaments. I always see them. We never really get to take a look mm -hmm. at them, but I always I always uh, notice the name and it makes me laugh. And I always kind of uh, in, enjoy seeing them in the bracket. But they've won 2-0. They're going to be in the round of eight now, looking to face the winner of Reunited versus Project X. So their work's still cut out for them. Uh, still in that bracket is the life of Hanzo. Of course, we expect Flat Earth to win uh, but you know upsets always happen then in the top side of course it looks to be working its way towards an IDD QD versus mix-up rematch uh, somewhere in that bracket but of course teams like Ventus and uh, G2 are going to have something to say about that as well definitely so uh, we're going to be taking a short break here on the Ghost of Gears Overwatch Weekly as we move into the round of eight. Uh, you won't want to miss it uh, could very well be Life Hanzo versus Flat Earth which will be a great set We'll bring, and we'll be bringing that to you in just a moment, so stay tuned. 